At this point, we have the Raspberry Pi set up uh, and we've connected the network. We've gotten the IP address um, using ifconfig space dash A. Um, and this we can use to connect uh, from Linux through SSH in the terminal, or we can connect from Windows using PuTTY uh, or from iOS in the terminal. Okay, so, so at this point though, uh, this Raspberry Pi is connected to a local area network. And that means that this IP address, if we were to go to Starbucks or to another location, outside of the firewall would not work, right? Because this is being given by a local DNS server. It's not a public IP address on the internet. All right, so, so we wanna go ahead and, and be able to access this Raspberry Pi from anywhere. So what we're going to do is, um, we're gonna to try to use the easiest way possible. Okay, so, so we could use an SHH tunnel. We could use a VPN with a, and uh, just automatically update our IP address to a uh, domain name, but the easiest way is to install remote support software. Okay, so, and there's lots of different versions of this, like uh, Regina, um, is it machine, uh, no machine, desktop anywhere, anyway, VNC, there's a couple different VNCs. The one that's been around for a long time that seems to work quite well, even though it's commercial, and I wouldn't trust it in a secure environment, but you know this is a this is an educational setting, uh, is TeamViewer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install TeamViewer. So let's go ahead and open up a browser. So TeamViewer needs to be installed on two computers. So we have a computer that acts as the server. In this case, that's the Raspberry Pi. That's the machine that's being controlled. And then you have a machine that acts as a viewer. Okay, so basically it has to be installed in two places. In addition, uh, in order to make the connection, TeamViewer, uh, basically you go through a TeamViewer server. Okay, and that means that you have to have a TeamViewer account as well. So, so during the installation process, you, if you don't have an account, it will prompt you to make an account. Uh, and then basically once you log in, uh, there's a process where you add each computer you're gonna access to and from into your account. Uh, basically what happens is when you try to install it, it will send you an email where you have to verify that you want to add that particular machine onto your account. Okay, so I went to download, I just searched it in Google, uh, and then I clicked on Raspberry Pi, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and download host. So we're gonna click on download host, And now we're downloading this .deb file. Uh, we're gonna click keep, and then we're gonna just uh, click on the, the .deb file, which is the installation file for uh, uh, Debian-based Linux systems. We're gonna go ahead and click install, and then it will go, and then it will start to install. Okay, it's asking us for the root or administrator password, which in this case, the default for Raspberry Pi is Pi username and then Raspberry. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Uh, another thing to note here um, is that when you first install Raspberry Pi, basically it comes with a UK, uh, UK mapping on the keyboard. So basically what you're gonna have to do is go in, I should show this by step by step. So click on Raspberry Pi, go to preferences, go to keyboard, mouse and keyboard settings. click on keyboard, click on keyboard layout, and then basically you need to change this to English US. And the reason for that is, is that the labels on keyboards in the US show the at symbol above the two, but the at symbol is not above the two. You can't get to it by clicking shift two uh, uh, if you have a UK layout. So you need to change that layout. The other thing is that I've noticed on Raspberry Pis that basically, we won't be able to do it for just a second. But there's kind of this annoying robotic voice that starts to read out things on your Raspberry Pi. It's for, it's for, it's it's a great uh, thing for users who are, uh, can't, who are uh, sight impaired. Uh, but for the rest of us, it's not super useful and it, it can be pretty, uh, pretty jarring. So uh, we'll, we'll remove that as well in just a second here. Okay, so we just accepted the 
team viewer uh, ELA. So that's a user agreement. Basically, it's saying that it's okay to use it for free for nonprofit purposes. If you work for a company, you need to pay TeamViewer because it's commercial software. Okay, so at this point, it's installed. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and grant easy access. So you see right here, this grant easy access. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and close the browser. Um, on Raspberry Pi, we only have one gig of RAM, right? So this is Raspberry Pi 3, it has one gig of RAM. That means that you can't run a lot of things at one time. So even installing TeamViewer is a pretty heavy lift for Raspberry Pi. So, so I would suggest that once you get your development done and you're gonna run it permanently, that you actually remove this once you don't need it anymore. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and click Grant Easy Access. And then it's gonna give us a chance to add this into our account. Now, if you didn't change your keyboard layout at this point, you're going, hey, why can't I type this at symbol, okay? Uh, and the reason is, is that you have a UK layout on your keyboard. Okay, so, all right, if you didn't have an account, you'd click create account there. Okay, so I clicked assign. Uh, then we have to give the uh, root password once again. And we'll wait another minute. Okay, and there we are all logged in. So at this point, uh, we also want to set uh, a couple of options. So we're going to go ahead and click the gear right there. So you're going to be accessing this probably from a LAN right off the bat. Um, we're going to go ahead and click accept incoming LAN uh, connections. Uh, you can also turn uh, this proxy settings on Wake on LAN, just, just leave it alone for now. Click advanced, and then we're gonna go ahead and scroll down. Uh, I would say that you wanna click disable team viewer shutdown, okay? Uh, but we're just gonna leave that unchecked for now in case you wanna turn it off to, to save RAM at some later date. So we'll go ahead and click okay. All right, so there's team viewer. Uh, it's all installed and it will restart automatically whenever you start up your computer or wherever you start up Raspberry Pi. Okay, uh, best of luck. Uh, in the next, uh, Next video or a subsequent video will show how to connect to it from a remote computer.